Oh, you asked about what uh, Pope John Paul II, most people wouldn't think about this, okay. but he was uh, the great promoter of canon law, and basically we're dealing with uh, a similar situation as in society. He, he came upon the, the scene, he was elected to the See of Peter uh, during a time in which there, was, there had grown up a great disrespect for the discipline of the church. Uh, immediately after the council, and especially under the influence of the cultural uh, revolution in 1968, there was this sense that we we're all people of love and freedom and that we don't need these rules anymore. And uh, shortly what we discovered was uh, the lawlessness that results from that. In other words, the law doesn't block our love for one another, it doesn't block our encounter with Christ, but in fact disposes us to really uh, meet one another with respect and with love and in the same way too to encounter God. And so uh, St. John Paul II, even though himself was not a trained kind of lawyer, he was a, really a, a, a top-notch philosopher and theologian, but he understood this, the importance of, the, of discipline for the life of the church, and so it was he who pushed to get the, the Code of Canon Law revised, and in 1983 he was able to promulgate the Code of Canon Law. And he wrote a beautiful introduction to it, and, and basically uh, what he did was draw upon the whole uh, teaching of the Old Testament, the New Testament, with regard to the law, our Lord's own words, that I did not come to abolish the law and the prophets, but to, to fulfill them. And uh, so the, the gift of the Holy Spirit poured forth in our hearts doesn't uh, give us the freedom to do whatever we please, but uh, gives us the, the freedom to, to be disciplined uh, and therefore to, to love one another. And so he talks about how important the law is, for instance, for, the sac for sacred worship, that it be well disciplined so that the, the encounter with Christ that takes place in the sacred liturgy can, take, can really take place and is not blocked by, by someone using the liturgy for some other purpose or by our own particular whims or, or whatever it may be. He talked about our relationships with one another in the church, and how those have to be well ordered in order that they can continue and, and develop. And then uh, he talked too about the people have to be able to vindicate their rights in the church. For instance, let us say uh, uh, someone who entered a marriage, which he or she thought was a, a valid marriage, but then discovered that the, the, the spouse had uh, kept from the marriage consent uh, an essential element uh, of marriage, for instance, uh, had reserved for himself the, the right to be unfaithful or uh, to, uh, uh, was opposed to children. And so uh, a person in that situation has a right in the church to, uh, uh, to seek a judgment in order that he or she could enter into a valid marriage. And there are other situations as well. But all of that is, 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 is safeguarded and promoted by canon law. And so uh, we owe a great debt of gratitude. Uh, the figure of John Paul II is practically so great that it's hard to take in. But uh, one important part of it would be the, his work to restore respect for discipline in the church. Is it true then that maybe you see that the, the essence of, or the reason for the law is for the love? Exactly. Oh no, it's that's the whole point. Uh, the, as the Pope John Paul II in that apostolic constitution promulgating the Code of Canon Law, he says uh, love and the charisms and all those beautiful things, sacred worship, the teaching of the faith, they, that all has the primacy. But in order that all those beautiful things can take place, you need a good order in the life of the church. And that makes it possible. That, how should I say, disposes everything to, to go well for sacred worship, for, for uh, teaching, for all the other wonderful activities of the church. So it, 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 law is always at the service of the love of God and of our neighbor.